अगर हम चित्र सूत्र एक ढंग से पढ़ते हैं तो उसमें बहुत रेफरेंसेस हैं कि कैसे कि उन्हें जो हम देखते हैं हमारे वर्ल्ड में उसको किस हिसाब से हम आर्टिस्टिक कन्वेंशन में ट्रांसलेट करें और हालांकि द टर्म अनुकरण बाद दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच आई हैव यूज्ड एज माय फ्रेम बट इट हेल्प्स मी टू बी एबल टू लुक एट द टेक्स्ट इन अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट वे अलंकार को लेकर बात की जैसे अलंकार है कंकन करण कल किंकिन कलित कट कलित कंगन कंगूर कृत कारी कामनी फूल कोमल कपोल कंठ कंबुत कपोत ग्रीव को खिला कला तो का की आवृत्ति है अलंकार है सौंदर्य है पूरा सौंदर्य बहुत है क्लियर मीनिंग में इसको किस तरह से आपने व्यक्त करने की कोशिश तो जैसे कि मैंने इस पेपर में कहा था कि ये जो अलंकार है वो हालांकि ये ये टर्म टेक्सटल सोर्स शिल्प शास्त्र में नहीं मिलते हैं ये लिटरी टेक्स्ट में मिलते हैं लेकिन uh, हम उसमें वी कैन सी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कनेक्शन या बिकॉज देर इज ऑल्सो रेफरेंस टू अलंकार इन चित्र सूत्र इन इन डबल सेंस वन इज ऑफ कोर्स ऑर्नामेंट्स वर्ल्ड बाय वेमेन द अदर वन इज यू कैन एक्चुअली लुक एट ऑल द फॉर्मल कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स ऑफ अ पेंटिंग लाइक like lines color vartana shading they are also ornaments so you find in chitra sutra you have the two two levels of meaning which are also being debated in poetics they exactly talking about this that is alankar something which is just an ex- external trapping or is it something which is so deeply ingrained with the structure that you cannot remove it remove it without disturbing the structure very kirtak it's called yani kirtak शिल्प को लेकर के मैं दोनों शिल्प और Yeah, I'm Sanjay, ma'am. We've joined in late, so we really don't know what has gone through. But, uh, yeah, this is Sanjay. So I just wanted to ask you. You're seeing the last slide. This is about Ajanta. So like, I've been there also. So if you could just share some more light, like when you talk about decolonizing. So how do we see this Ajanta and the other visual arts? Uh, as I said, that the frame of the Ajanta is that it's Anukritiyanu Anukaran. or a certain what i understand as performative mimesis was uh, seen as not central to a understanding of indian art so it was not really ever looked at seriously and that is something which i want to bring in as a very very productive frame through which one one can look at very canonized artworks from a slightly different light right thank you trajectory between the spirit with which and if you are accommodating of the spirit with which kumaraswami wrote and saying that we can consider it as a means of writing as if it was what we would today call decolonizing so is there a substantive difference what is the remainder what is the difference in the use like Are all these terms then the just the same? Was na- was the spirit of nationalism that went on between the twenties to forties mm-hmm. any different from the spirit of writing in a in in writing that would be called decolonizing today? Are mm-hmm. they the same thing just being dressed up in different mm-hmm. language? Yeah, my answer is uh, the 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 two de- decolonizations that I spoke about they are very very different in the sense that when Kumar Swami is using um, a particular frame of polarized comparison to which he could he wanted to bring out um, something which he considered exclusive to Indian art and he there was a certain anxiety i would say uh, in Kumar Swami 
uh, because he felt that if you are going to listen to the text, because text is saying that. And you believe India does not have that anxiety. Yeah. Uh, no, what I'm saying <laughs> is, because he had to, he had to uh, confront, uh, you know, critics like, for example, John Ruskin, who actually wrote a book called The Two Parts. An entire book is about one wrong path, which you see in the colonies, and the right path, which is there in the, the metropolitan you know, city where colonization you know, is the epicenter. And so I can, I can understand where Kumar Swami's anxiety was coming from. And I'm fully appreciative of his, this framework that he had to take resort to. And it, it worked very effectively. In fact, it was hugely successful. But whether we can really carry on with the same framework when circumstances are different today, do we have to uh, suffer from that that sense of um, you know worry that I have to create a very distinctive position for Indian art to make it incomparable, so that if there's a chance of comparison, the fear was that Indian art will, will come out in a poor light. And today, I think we should, since we have tra traveled such a long distance, to have the same kind of anxiety, for me, is deeply problematic. Our questions should be different to the past because our location is different. Anyone else? So, thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to invest, uh, uh, sorry, invite Mr. Ashish Koker to kindly give his concluding remarks. As a student of history, I think we went on a journey today where more questions have been raised and you will now be forced to almost do a book at some point in time on this subject because the knowledge pool is so vast and this rewriting and this repositioning and this whole new approach to what is India in India today and what is how West has perceived it will need an examination, which is why I think organizations and institutions like IGNCA, which are multidisciplinary, have a critical role to play and for which we are grateful because this is one forum where the university, the cultural institutions, the bureaucracy and the thinkers, the media can all merge and meet at one point. So a big hand for IGNCA. Dr. Sanjay Jha, Dr. Joshi, and the team who have actually even remembered Anand Kumar Swami. His dance of Shiva for us in the field of arts has remained a cult book. Of course, much quoted, much criticized often. So one wonders after a point in time of 50 years as a student of history who then teaches history and writes history, one wonders if history is good or bad or it just is. After a point, history just is. Because it's the prism with which one sees it. It is the uh, point in time in history which one views it or reviews it. So it is uh, quite a uh, task and quite an onerous one at that for scholars, for academicians, for university uh, researchers, teachers. I see a lot of enthusiastic students. And speaking of which, I would say if any of you wish to learn dance, you go to a master. And the master says, what a good idea, please come. But do you know anything about painting? Because you must know something about line, you must know something about form. The student next goes to a painter, and the painter says, a jolly good idea. But do you know anything about form? Creating nothing out of space. Please go to a sculptor. So the journey continues. In the end, the student, very confused, like some of us are today, go to the musician and says, can you teach me music? Because I need to learn this, I need to learn that, in order to learn that. So the journey is never ending. Some of your students here, I can see, good luck to you because you are in the best part of young India today. The burden and the responsibility for all history that has gone before us rests on you. I'm sure all of you at JNU and other universities are doing a splendid job of taking this whole movement forward. We can only thank that we are in a country where there's such choice, so much is happening and with such abundance and openness. Thank you for being here. Thank you once again, Dr. Parul Dave Mukherjee Ji, and thank you for being here on a precious Friday evening. I'm sure it was a learning curve for many of us. Manglam Hava. 
before my colleague will present the vote of thanks, I would like to make a little uh, announcement. Cultural Archive will be celebrating the Century of Legion Dance Scholar and Collective Professor Mohan Khokar in December, starting at Kala Chetra, then Alexei Musibarota, then Delhi. His learned dance collection is with IGNCA. Exhibition Book Plus Seminar will be in Indian, nationally and internationally. Thank you very much.